Welcome to episode 33 of the Animus Island podcast. I'm Aftermath, that's Parkway, and that's Aries. Say hello, guys. Hello, everybody. It is the day after Friday, Saturday, Friday, and it, it is a good day. Set set a Friday? What was that? <laughs> I make my own rules. <laughs> okay, okay. Set a Friday. Uh, so Seneca just released yesterday officially for everyone, so we are digging into that uh, completely spoiler-free, though. Um, we'll have lots to talk about. We haven't even finished ourselves, so don't expect any kind of spoilers nope. from us. Um, but before we head over to there, I will talk a little bit about something I did this week. And even before that, let's explain what's going to be happening in next week's episode. Aries, could you give it to us? So next week, what we're going to do is um, do a throwback to E3 uh, when we first got some, some syndicate goodies. So we're going to do a rounds table discussion with the community. And by that, uh, for those of you who did see the E3 episode, what we're going to do is three of us next week will be there for a completely uh, spoiler-free discussion. But what we're going to do is have people from, uh, from Twitter, from Reddit, from wherever, we don't discriminate, uh, hop on into the call uh, so we can uh, have different people from the community give their thoughts and just have a, a nice group conversation about Syndicate. So um, that should be uh, fun logistics forthcoming. Um, uh, you can probably check that out in the description. I'm sure Aftermath will be posting on the subreddit and tweeting about it. Yep. Uh, but uh, if you would like to be on that episode, just uh, give us a ring and then uh, we'll probably be able to fit you in somehow. Yep, it will be just like last time, and if you were one of the guests on the E3 episode, then you'll know how it will work. We'll bring you in one at a time, you'll tell us what you think uh, about Syndicate, we'll try and leave the discussion in an interesting way. Um, that will also be spoiler-free, um, and hopefully we'll be a bit further through it so we can have some more coherent thoughts, more put-together thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe it should be time to get started. Anything else you guys want to mention before we uh, head into our first topic? Let's jump in. This week, I got the amazing opportunity to do something very, very special. I um, was flown to Montreal, and I actually, to be on the Assassin's Creed Syndicate spoiler-free funcast, I believe they're calling it, um, and it was an amazing experience. I met a ton of people. Um, and I, I got to see Montreal, I got to see Ubisoft Montreal a bit. Um, I'll give us a bit of a play-by-play -play, uh, for the, throughout the day, but uh, not too specific, because I know that a lot of people probably do not care that much, while a lot of people might care. So I'll, um, I'll, give, uh, I'll explain a little bit, and I'll hopefully be able to thank everyone that allowed me to do this, um, which was, uh, as I said, an amazing experience. So um, I flew into Montreal, and... As a city, I really like Montreal. Um, it reminds me a lot of Christchurch, my hometown in New Zealand, uh, because there, there's like the older buildings with the brick mixed in with some new buildings, and um, I really like it. And Does it remind you of Chicago? Um, at all? I mm -hmm. didn't spend... At least, I guess you've only seen it in Watch Dogs. I've only seen... But I personally thought it looked a lot like Chicago. Yeah, I could see that. With the hill in the middle. I could see that, yeah. Um... Yeah, as you said, I I I don't have much experience with Chicago personally. Um, I did fly into it, and so um, I have plenty of experience with the airport. Uh, but in Watch Dogs, yeah, I could actually see like some of the more um, like the suburban areas, like in Chicago. Uh, in Watch Dogs, my favorite area, of course, was like the central oh, downtown yeah. area. And I didn't which go is almost too one much to one. That. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, which is which is crazy, and then the rest of it's more like the spirit of Chicago. But anyway. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, Montreal. Um, the Ubisoft guys treated me very, just so great. So I arrived at UB Montreal um, 12 on Thursday. And I sat down and I uh, signed things that you need to sign. And I uh, got a goodie bag full of some things um, from UB Workshop, uh, which are fun. And I met up with uh, Andy or Esco. It's actually funny, actually, because, like, every single time I talk to him, I switch between calling him Andy and calling him Esco. Because, like, everywhere online, he goes by Esco. And so everyone online calls him Esco. And then everyone in real life, as you might expect, calls him Andy. And so, like, 
my brain was all mitted up and I was like, oh, hey, Esco, oh, hey, Andy. Every single time I was talking to him, um, it was funny. So, yeah, and then we went and we headed to, um, Medea came in, who was, uh, if you saw the stream, then she was the cosplayer. Um, she was super cool. Uh, and we went over to the streaming room, which was epic. We wandered through U Montreal to get there, uh, past the For Honor floor, uh, which was cool. Saw some concept art that they have, like, hanging. Because, like, you know, when they're working on a game, they have, like, all the, um, art for it hanging on the wall and stuff. Um, and that was cool. And I met the For Honor com dev team later on the day. Um, nice. And we were hanging out in the, uh, streaming room, uh, doing some prep and things like that, and, um... So the stream started at 3, and we got there at 12. Um, and so Andy Esco took us on a little, a little um, mini-tour around UV Montreal uh, at what we were allowed to see, because, of course, there's lots of secret things going on at UV Montreal. So we uh, checked out some of the main floors, and we checked out the terrace, which gives a great view of Montreal. Um, we met some people. We met Antoine on the uh, AC brand team, and... Um, we saw this big wall of like, there's this big wall of collectibles. Um, like, I think pretty much every AC collectible is uh, is there. And even like some of the, um, like some of the things that never made it past the prototyping stage. So I think that like, um, Alexis the Animus' uh, Matthew would really like that because he's big into the collectible stuff. And I was just like, mm. um, Matthew would love this. Uh, even like the uh, discontinued things. Um, and so we went on a little tour, which was fun. Then we came back down and I uh, met Gabe. Like, one of the funny things about meeting these guys is that they were talking to me like we've known each other for ages. And it was just crazy to me. I was just like... It was really cool. Yeah, I felt the same way. I was like, it's it was Gabe. Insane. Hi, Gabe. And he was like, oh, hey, Nick. How you doing? And I was like, nah, nah. Um, luckily, I didn't fangirl out too much, but... Uh, that, the point where I did fangle out too much would come later in the day. Um, and so we went through, like, the stream, uh, we had a bit of a, like, a rehearsal part of the stream, um, before the actual stream started, um, and that's when Cam arrived, who was another guest on the, um, on the stream, you would have seen him, um, he was, uh, he was really cool to talk to as well, um, really fun, uh, and then, um, Whatever next. So then Cam left to go eat something, I think, because he was hungover. Um, and Medea went to go get changed into her Eevee cosplay. That takes 20 minutes. Damn. That's crazy. Like, it was so... That costume was so elaborate. And um, it was... It's, oh, I can't even imagine doing something like that. And she was talking about how... Um, Medea was telling me how much, like, how long she spent making this costume for, like, a month. Like, every single day when she got home from work, she'd work on it till, till um, she got the chance to sleep, however rare that was. And that's, like, a ton of work. I'm just, like, I just make sure so no one's saying anything racist on the subreddit. Um, <laughs> and spoilers, as of late. Oh, yeah, and spoilers, particularly now. Um, and so, yeah. And those two went off, and I um, I stayed. I was talking to Gabe quite a bit um, about like Syndicate and things like that. And I, I noticed that Syndicate was in front of us for the stream, and I was like, "Hey, hey, 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 hey Gabe, uh, would I would I be able to play a little bit?" And he was like, "Oh yeah, sure, go ahead." Um, <laughs> so that was fun. I got to play a little bit of Syndicate just a little bit early, um, messing around in the uh, on uh, Gabe's profile. Um, which was really fun. I was I continued to talk to him, and while that may have been a little rude, playing the game and talking to him at the same time, uh, he seemed okay with it because um, I was very very excited. Um, so yeah, that was like twenty minutes I was talking to Gabe, uh, and then the stream was getting kind of close, and so um, yeah, actually Cam went to go have lunch, and then Medea had lunch as well, um, and I was like I was playing Syndicate and talking to Gabe and. Um, uh, Stephanie, uh, your respective, was like, Nick, you should probably have lunch at some point. And I was like, mm, Nah. Mm, mm, um, mm. And, and Gabe was like, mm, Yeah, you might want to have lunch. And I was like, ah, Okay, okay. One sandwich. Um, and so oh, yeah. I, um, I left uh, the room and I went to, to the little um, kind of cafe area they had set up there. And it was cool. I had a sandwich and I was talking to Stephanie quite a bit about Syndicate. Oh, did you go to the cafe on the first floor? Yes. Yeah, that place. Um, That's cool. And so yeah, I was talking to Stephanie quite a bit over lunch, which was fun. 
Um, and then, so I had lunch and then I returned to the streaming room and um, when I returned, it was about time to get started with the stream. Uh, and you saw, you guys saw what basically happened on the stream. I mentioned it, you two a few times. Uh, specifically, uh, We like, were in class, actually, as it was happening. Yeah. So we didn't get to check out the stream. But we got a play-by-play by, play by uh, a, a, a couple people. So mm-hmm. yeah. uh, we heard it was awesome. So we're definitely glad. Yeah. It, it I gave like you two a few shout-outs mentioning your, like, uh, the Ooh. diversity of the fans. Like how uh, you guys talk about the history a lot. And um, especially you, Aries. And then, um, Connor, you talk about the music a lot. And I was, like, I was talking about how, like, I have no idea what's going on. But you and Austin Wintry were talking all about the uh, music. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so then there was a stream and that was fun uh, basically just stayed um, in the back of the scenes until behind the scenes until it was my turn uh, the streaming setup itself was really good it was um, crazy I saw later on some pictures that people had took of the uh, um, of the chat where people were saying hi to me and I don't think anyone realized that I actually can't see the chat when uh, you're in the room uh, actually it's only um, Stephanie was on you respect on Twitter was on uh, chat duty and checking the chat and then would bring up anything that was like important and needed a shout out or something like that. Um, in this massive word document, would bring it to our, uh, to the, to Gabe and, um, and his attention. Uh, so that was a stream, which was a ton of fun. And then after the stream was a bit of an after party to su- celebrate the launch, uh, which was cool. Um, a bunch of people from, uh, the, uh, the Comdiv department came in, and the For Honor Comdivs came in, um, and that was cool. And um, so we're just hanging out, talking with them a bit. Then they went away eventually, and we we're going to head out for dinner. Um, and that's when uh, me and Gabe returned to talking and playing Syndicate at the same time, which was a ton of fun. Um, then, yeah, then we went and we, um, then probably the, the most eventful thing of the day happened and um gabe and stephanie took us upstairs um to the ac floor and we went to go see the uh the wall of uh world renowned games uh which is there's a few pictures of it on twitter which is ubisoft has up and it's like every single um ubisoft game that's done really well since 1997 and it's really cool so we're taking pictures in front of that and we were talking about that and then uh gabe disappeared into the back and he said he'll be right back and then, like, I don't know, two minutes went by. And then, and then, um, then this man, um, I'll, I'll explain my, like, thought path with this. Because, um, this all happened about th- the space of three seconds. So this, uh, Gabe walked out and this man walked out. And I was like, that man looks an awful lot like, like awful lot like Darby. Then I was like, oh, that's Darby. And I was like, wait a second, that's not Darby. Then I was like, that's Darby! Um... <laughs> And that'll happen about the space of three seconds. And I, I was like, I couldn't move. I was like, so happy. I, was, um, I could barely get any words out. <laughs> also, uh, Cam and Medea, you shut up. Um, it was amazing meeting Davi. I managed to move my legs enough that I could get a picture. Um, but he mentioned the, the podcast and he mentioned uh, how he talked to you, uh, Aries, a few weeks ago. Um, which was great. Uh, it was great talking and seeing Darby. Um, Wasn't it? it was, oh, yeah, it was, yeah. I wish, like, I don't know how you sat down and had an actual discussion with him because I would have just sat there just been like, mm, I, I like DC4. Mm, shanties. <laughs> and that would be all I could say. Um, it was, it was crazy. Um, and so we were talking and then what we were talking, uh, Raphael, because uh, this, we came in at like lunchtime for all the employees and when the stream was over, it was like, um, end of the work day for all the employees, so everyone was um, hitting. Oh, out. you ran into any, everyone, didn't you? <laughs> um, not everyone, but uh, because some people leave, left uh, like ten minutes before we were finished. Like um, uh, some of the guys working on the movie uh, left a little before us. Um, mm. I remember specifically, and some people left a little later, staying a bit later. Um, but actually, like one person that was that we were talking to Davi, and then he came out was Rafael Lacoste. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, um, he was just leaving, so we only got to talk to him for just a little bit. Um, but that was cool uh, because uh, I don't want to hold him up, of course. And then um, another cool thing happened, and it was like an unbelievable coincidence. Like Ash, Ashraf Ismail was leaving, um, and oh, like, nice. yeah, I, I met him, and we were talking a little bit about how um, 
AC4, which was amazing. So I was talking to Darby and Ash, and yeah, it was really cool. Ash was really cool. Um, so that was that. Um, talked to Darby a little bit, and he then he had to get going, um, which was it was yeah, it was really cool. And then we had uh, went back to the hotel, um, got all dressed up for dinner, and we had dinner. I was talking to Gabe a ton during dinner, which was epic. Um, yeah, overall, the day was amazing. All three days were really amazing. Um, just, yeah, I'm not doing it justice by explaining it. It, it was amazing. Like, mm-hmm. being able to talk to all these people, talking to Gabe a ton. <laughs> I feel like Gabe's probably sick of me now because I'm asking him so many <laughs> questions. You know, I'm um, giving him the third degree, like, like, what do you think of this? Oh, man, what, what are the rope launch and syndicate? How do you like that? And, Oh, I was I was asking him some questions. I was talking to. Uh, it was great to talk to Stephanie over lunch. Um, I wish I could have talked to Andy a little bit more, um, but he was super busy. He was uh, running around, and of course, it was the day before launch, so um, yeah. everyone was super was busy. busy. Like the fact that they invited us at all is complete insanity. Um, so I can't blame Andy for being uh, busy. Um, I can't blame him at all. Um, I'm not complaining about it or anything. I'm just saying, uh, if things have been different. I would like to talk to him a little bit more as well. Um, I'd like to thank some people for this day uh, and the situation because it was amazing. I want to thank Gabe. I want to thank Andy. I want to thank Stephanie. I want to thank... Um, of course, I also want to thank Justin, uh, Joker. Uh, even though he couldn't be there, um, it was still... Um, I, interacted with, I interacted with him a little bit. Um, and I know that he was, all, he was working behind the scenes on the stream and things like that. And so it was... Um, yeah. I'd like to thank Justin for that. Um, uh, Jeff Skolsky, who was uh, one of the devs on the stream, he was great to talk to. Um, he was a ton of fun. Uh, Frederick Ode, uh, he was another dev on the team, uh, on the stream, and he was uh, super cool too. Um, oh man, I'm going to forget people. I can Andrew, hear you smiling after Matt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Um, and Andrew was a producer on the stream. I don't know Andrew's last name. Um, but he was super cool. Um, skydiving, Andrew. Um, uh, oh, who else? Uh, of course, thanks to Darby for <laughs> um, saying hi. Uh, thanks to Ash for saying hi as well. Rafael, of course. Um, oh, man. Like, who else? I met, I met a lot of people. And it was, it was an amazing day. Like, I don't often tweet things. But, like, I had to tweet some things. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't really express my thanks for this day enough. Um, it was amazing how they hooked me up with this. It was, yeah. <laughs> um, going to Montreal, the other side of Montreal, seeing some of the people, meeting the devs, um, meeting Gabe and Andy, uh, it, and, uh, Stephanie, it was, yeah, <laughs> being involved with the stream itself, um, not even there to just watch the stream live, um, actually live, but uh, being there to actually experience it in person, um, man, actually that reminds me, the streaming room was really hot, like, um, I don't know if you saw him, I was sweating, but like, it's a small room filled with like camera equipment and lights, as you might expect, um, mm-hmm. it gets kind of hot in there. Um, Canada wasn't actually that bad in terms of, like, the weather. Um, it was a little cold on the third day. Um, but that wasn't too bad. It was like Arizona overnight, kind of cold. Not what you might expect from Canada, kind of cold. Um, I don't have anything else to say. Other than, yeah, it was amazing. Oh, and massive thanks to Medea and Cam for being, uh, great co-guests. Is, is that a thing? I think that's a thing. But they were great to hang out with and great to talk to. Um, I definitely appreciate um, all they did when they were um, talking to me and hanging out. Um, do you guys have any questions for me before uh, we move on to, to the glory that is Syndicate? Uh, let's, let's jump in, I say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, moving on. So, as it is a very good week, uh, a week to top all weeks this week... Um, we were all playing Syndicate in some capacity yesterday and the day before. 
uh, McCracken Way and I, uh, after class, uh, got out, and he was waiting for Syndicate to download as I was waiting for Syndicate to show up in my mailbox, and we had a race to see which would come first. Surprise, surprise, my mailbox uh, was filled at the same time as download finished, uh, so... We both went home and played for a little while, and then mm-hmm. his download got stuck at two percent. So we'll it came say, over. What we did, what we did while waiting is, um, Aries played through Journey, we played Journey, oh, nice which was great. Awesome. And we were tweeting to Austin Winter, and he was favoriting our tweets because he's really cool and talking to us. So that was really fun. Uh, but nice. that good game, play Journey if you haven't played it already. It's great. But anyway, um, the timing was hilarious. So I was playing through sequences one and two, and as Connor McCrackenway showed up. Uh, I had actually just started sequence three, so the timing could not have been more perfect. But we were playing it through, and we had some thoughts. Uh, all, of course, very spoiler-free. Um, one of the first things that we noticed was uh, the DLC weapon unlock uh, schematic and way that works. In old games, it would be that you know you you put in all the codes and get your fancy DLC weapons, and they all pop into your menu, and you can use them instantly. So usually, they're kind of crappy. Or they're super overpowered, and then there's no point in using any of the other weapons. But yeah. with Syndicate, they're locked by level, which is really cool. Because you can get, you know, with the, the Pirate Pack or whatever, a level 3 Kukri. And with the Victorian Pack or whatever the hell it's called, you get a level you know 6 Sword Cane. And you can't just use those from the beginning. You have to actually work up to them. So there's still a reason to use them all. And... It's nice because it still keeps the progression instead of just tossing you a bunch of really crappy weapons at the beginning that you won't use after a while. And then the other option of giving you a really good weapon like in Rogue. So I used the Katanas until like the end of the game because they were just better than everything else. Uh, it just It's nice and it works. And we like the way the weapons work because yeah. you can get um, a bunch of different weapons of the same skill level. So you can have some choice in how they look and still get similar stats, which we really appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, McCracken, what do you uh, what do you think of the Thames? Talk about the Thames. Oh that man, was one of parts. I'm actually so in the Thames right now in the game. Um, yeah, we're all so playing right now. Perfect timing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Thames is hands down like the best water area of any game ever. Period. Uh, mostly because it is like this entire. I mean, like they talked a lot about carriages and how the carriages moved around in. Uh, you know, in Syndicate, but in the lead up to Syndicate, but the Thames is just filled with traffic, with boats. It's like you can cross the entire thing without ever touching it's the water. You system. just it's fantastic. Yeah, um, just wandering around here. There's a lot to do. Um, like if you, I feel like if you're ever, if you ever feel like you run out of stuff to do in this game, the place to go is the Thames because you uh, find activities that respawn because they come back in on boats. Um, and it's just a lot of dynamic uh, parkour opportunities as well because the boats are always shifting around. I really um, like that these uh, the crates appear when the boats aren't there, so you can cross mm-hmm. even yep. though yeah. um, the boats yeah. don't line up perfectly. Yeah, and then the boats just run them over. Um, yeah. It's so well designed. I can't imagine all the work that went into designing yeah, the traffic because it looks so organic, but it's clearly some degree of scripted mm-hmm. because... If it was just a random algorithm, there wouldn't be such such a a nice um, constant flow of boats to let you cross because there's always somewhere to jump to, which just makes it work so well. It's mm-hmm. so well designed. It's absolutely amazing, uh, and it's it's its own uh, borough as well, counted by the game stuff. So yeah, it's got all the activities. Yeah, it's got all the activities as um, every other. Uh, place in the game so you know there are templar hunts there are there's a gang stronghold i assume i haven't actually looked at them mm-hmm. i just did a templar hunt though yeah i was uh, like um on thursday i was wondering like um i was looking at the map and i, um, I was talking to gabe and um i was like well how does the thames work because it's a big river like how was there a massive district then he was like well go see you know i went and there was like activities on all the boats it's amazing how they did that and they made the absurd. thames its own district which um, in the very early maps when they were first released didn't really make much sense because um, we saw that it was his own district and we're just like, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah. I really like how they managed to work that out. Yeah, the Thames yeah. is probably so far one of my favorite parts of the game um, just because, oh God, it's just so cool. Um, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's like a dirty 
interactive version of Venice, sort of, yep. in the way uh, you approach it. Of course, Aries and I it's did better have Venice. This, yeah, we did have this um, discussion, though, like, because um, last night we kept comparing bits of Syndicate to bits of other games, and eventually we were like, we should stop doing that. Just let Syndicate be Syndicate. Because Syndicate is so much its own unique thing. So, yeah, the Take Back London thing echoes uh, AC Brotherhood. The whole idea of, you know, the water elements from, you know, the Thames echoes Venice AC too. But Syndicate is so unique, and the degree of motion that you see, and they talked about, like, it's fast-paced, there are a lot of moving parts, but you really can't get that across in words until you really see it. But one thing that blew my mind was there are cranes that move back and forth Mm-hmm. On the Thames and other places and too, which is insane. It's it's unbelievable. It's so distinct in how it works. And I'm just I'm standing on top of a train right now that's just taking me to where I want to go, and then I'm going to jump off and use the rope launcher to swing around a bit. It's just it's absolutely brilliant. I really I like how the, I really like how the outfit system works now too. Yes, like, the outfit system is great. It doesn't like overwrite your gear, it kind of adds on to your gear. And it's kind of like the base coat and things like that. It's just the only thing that outfit controls. Yeah. So I like that you have, you know, one big customization option between Jacob and Evie, which is the belt and the cape respectively, uh, echoing of AC2. Um, <laughs> but I like that you can do the colors for everything and it just it feels nice. It it works. It's it's nice because um, one thing that I actually really liked as well is uh, the locked outfits are grayed out so you can't even see what they look like. So like with AC Unity where it's like, here's the bell like outfit. Oh, gee, I wonder how you get that one. Um, that was kind of a, a mini spoiler just in the menu screen. But this, the outfits that you don't have, they don't even bother to show you. So you only see them when you get them, which is really nice. Yeah, definitely. Um, Connor, you are going to mention something there? Oh, I was just... Um, naturally in the game, as I was playing right there, I, I damaged a, a fire engine and water started spilling out the back. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. I thought that was a nice little that's touch. That's cool. Oh, man, that's epic. Um, anything else you guys want to add? Oh, there's loads of oh, stuff. Oh, plenty. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I noticed uh, uh, when I was playing with Gregory last night, uh, a policeman chased us up on the roof, and it was like, how did they get there? And I realized how they get there. In a lot of the on a lot of the roofs, there's a little trap door, and they go into the building and come up through the trap door. Um, so it's a yeah. nice way, without saying like these guys can do mad parkour, to let fights take you up to the rooftops. Yeah. Um, uh, other things. other quick things. Um, I should mention uh, Connor's first sally into uh, Syndicate while we were playing. Uh, Connor, go ahead and tell the story, because it's hilarious. Okay, well, first off, uh, Gregory had just completed the uh, carriage tutorial. So, you know, staying outside. Uh, I will point out that uh, apparently there was an accident while he was talking to Henry Green. Uh, and he walked out, and there were three dead horses and a carriage just, like, on top of Parked them. on top of a horse. Yeah. Um, Which is terrifying. Oh, damn. So, For the poor horse. My first thing that I did was I went to try out the carriages, so I jumped in the carriage, realized I was going the wrong direction for uh, the objective, tried to turn around, and then a policeman blew his whistle uh, and threw me out of the carriage, I think. I'm actually forgetting. You tell the story. Jesus. I'm forgetting. So what um, basically what happened was I'm remembering the part with the carriage parked on top of the horse. Um, okay. But there was more funny stuff than that. Damn. Well, there was a carriage parked on top of the horse. Then uh, we saw the fire engine. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's what happened. Uh, In the process of trying to do a U-turn, Connor uh, was driving through a couple uh, light poles, and I was joking like, wow, those horses must be made of iron. And then he ran over a child, and I said, well, that kid was not. Uh, And then he tried to do a U-turn, got stuck. A policeman pulled him over. Uh, and I pulled him over, but like started like, oh, are you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so Connor <laughs> jumped out, started attacking the policeman, got bored of fighting him, shot him in the face. There was a child right next to him, traumatized a child, and then ran away. So illegal U-turn, beats up a police officer, shoots a police officer, traumatizes a child, and then runs off, which was, was just little... obscene and hilarious. And another yeah. thing was later there was another mission where um, 
there was one guy left on the map that Connor had to shoot, and it was by uh, by the docks by the Thames. So there was one guy who was facing the river. Connor held up his gun, uh, trained just right on his face, whistled. So the guy turned around, shot him. He was blown back. <laughs> so he turns around like what? Shot in the face, blown off the dock and into the Thames, which was hilarious. I will say the reason that I whistled was because you were like, "Hey, shoot that guy in the face." I was like, uh, "He's turned the wrong way. How can I do this?" So yeah. I whistled, turned around, shot him in the face. Uh, one thing about whistling is the distance is, I think, too much. And well, maybe not too much, but I'm so used to the rogue and um, four whistle distance that I always whistle and, like, five guys come to me. I'm like, oh, shit, no, I didn't mean to whistle that loudly. That's, that's one thing that I'm trying to get used to. Um, other Let's things see, that I really like. I uh, really love, like, Syndicate basically fixes every issue I had with Unity. It fixes the combat. It yep. feels way less floaty now. Yeah. Um, the story, the characters, we won't get into that at all today, but no. you, you actually like care for the characters and they have personalities that make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of interaction between Evie and Jacob that like, you immediately pick up on, um, which just serves to build character, which is great. Um, it's, it's really well written, mm-hmm. the dialogue. Yeah, nice work for your Harlem on that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. One thing uh, I know Aries and I talked about, um, we were really impressed at one of the interiors. Um, yeah. Like a factory interior. It feels because, so open. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, yeah, it's built like whereas Unity's was just like, okay, there's some interiors, but you're basically limited to fighting and crouching around. Is The factory interiors are basically built for um, parkour stealth like a parkour stealth mix. So, like, the kind of thing that, like, you get in, like, a major black box mission, you get um, in just normal normal gameplay. Um, I did notice uh, there's a... I did play a story mission where you you were limited to the ground like you were in Unity, but it was better designed, I thought. Uh... Very much so. Um, but I, I really like the multi-level stealth that you can pull off in the factories. Yeah. Factories are really well designed. I like it. Stealth feels great. Um, it's not... Exactly. All the problems with the Unity are pretty much fixed. Uh, a couple mm-hmm. little, very minor things I do have. Um, the map icons are super small, so I can't really tell what anything is by a cursory glance with the, like the collectibles and stuff. The collectibles weren't exactly explained, so I don't really know what's what. Um, and the crafting, I feel kind of lost in, but I feel like I'll get used to it as time goes on. But just now, it feels pretty overwhelming. But that's you know very minor yeah. compared to how just unbelievably good Syndicate is. One thing that I really seriously appreciate that they changed is now that you, you can buy the treasure maps for yeah. the treasures. Yeah. Instead of just yeah. having your map covered in this crap that looks like mold yeah. um, in a petri dish, it looks the map's much nicer and you can make the map look however you want, like if you want to buy all the treasure maps at once, then you can yep yeah uh, um, let's see I have, I have like four or five more things just noted down um, I noticed in the train, if you walk by your twin, they will comment on any gear you've just equipped um like, I swapped to the cane sword with Jacob, and Evie commented on, uh, you look good with the cane sword, and I swapped to uh, Knuckles with Evie, and Jacob said, like, something about uh, seeing her brawler side a bit more, or something like that. Um, so that was uh, a nice touch. Let's see. The soundtrack is beautiful. Uh, yep. Lots of quoting of various... Uh, there's a quote of a very British hymn. Um, I won't go into that. Um, I noticed today that there are things that they call social collectibles. Mm, yeah. Um, which reminds me of Black Flag. It even does the, like, discovered by uh, Connor yeah. Crack, and it lasts for this long. Um, uh, the side missions, I think, are well done that um, every side mission frees up a little bit of a uh, given district. 
Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I am still getting used to is the uh, the kidnap missions, which oh, yeah. maybe I just really suck at them, but uh, I don't find them especially intuitive, uh, at least not yet. Um, but hopefully I'll get better at them as time goes on. The Templar hunts are fantastic. I love those. Those are mm-hmm. great. Yeah, I haven't right. messed around with that stuff too much yet. I really like the city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The city London itself is, is great. Amazing. Oh, um, I like the near-death state. I just killed a guy. I like the near-death state you can put enemies into where their back is all hunched over and kind of shattered. There was one yeah. point where I was fighting a guy, and he was in a near-death state, and he tried to swing at me. But since he was in a near-death state, he swung and missed and fell over, or like mm-hmm. half fell over or something. It, it's just good detail. And I really like it. Yeah, Let's, good stuff. Um, oh, the tooltips that have, in loading screens, that have um, either Victorian history or Assassin's Creed history. Yeah. Uh, I thought those were a nice little touch. Those are, I like those. I, uh, anything else? That's all my stuff, at least, for now. Mm-hmm. My first impressions. Yeah, I will say um, there was a mission that I played earlier today that was pretty frustrating. Um, it was. It had an optional objective that was weird and wordly, but it was essentially to kill no one, um, which made it very hard. But that might just be that I'm. Oh, I know that mission. Yeah, I didn't like that one. Uh, that that was set up in a weird way that didn't quite make sense. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, mostly no complaints. This is an awesome game. Yeah, yeah. seriously, it's and if you're still so, on so good. Street, and by some chance listening to this podcast, you're missing out. All right, uh, I suppose we'll move on then. If there's nothing else to say. No. I really love how good of reviews it's getting. It's yeah. It's really great to see. Um, I haven't even checked the subreddit yet because I'm scared and like I wasn't moderating subreddit at all. Subreddit is more down on it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I expected. But Most I haven't checked it at all over the last three days, um, as you might expect, because I have I had better things to do with the time. Mm-hmm. Let me, I'm going to check it right now, <laughs> actually. Um, um, right. So, anything else? Uh, yeah. Massive congrats to the, uh, the Quebec team. Uh, did an amazing yeah, job. Job well done. Um, Austin Wintry did a great job. I was actually just listening to um, the last episode of the Wild Guesses podcast, and he was a guest on there. Um and he talked to quite a bit about uh, how he made Syndicate's soundtrack. So if you guys are interested in listening to that and hearing a bit more from him, then I would definitely recommend you checking that out. So this week we're going to be looking at another Reddit thread that we thought we could get some discussion out of. So, this week's thread is from Spooky Llama. Brilliant username, by the way. Uh, And he asks, what little things did you do in-game for realism, immersion, fun? So I think we all know what kind of thing he's hinting at here. Like, you know, some of the more um, obvious examples would be like um, not killing innocents or walking everywhere. Um, which is just happens to be the slowest possible way to play the game. Uh, what do you guys... Does anything come to mind for you guys that you would do for realism or immersion or just for fun? Um, well, one of the things that you can do in any Assassin's Creed game, of course, is turn off the HUD, um, which does a lot just to uh, make you feel like you're present in a time period rather than being uh, shown... Um, you know, your mini-map and your health and everything all the time. Yeah. Uh, also, I mean, walking, even if not walking everywhere, but, like, walking a little bit of the streets, because, I mean, in any Assassin's Creed game, my instinct is to go to the roofs, so I don't yep. see the streets a lot, but um, especially in this game and Unity, uh, walking the streets is uh, a real, like, it's something you should definitely do just to experience it. Um, for just because you don't 
get a sense of the street layout as much. Um, that's actually something I noticed with Revelations once, because Constantinople ha- is a is a lot less grid like than any other city. Um, yep. And there are streets that go under other streets, and it's really interesting since you spend most of your time on the rooftops. If you actually walk the paths, it takes a bit of effort to figure out where to go without breaking into free running. Mm. Yeah, just, yeah. Like, I've been walking places um, in this, like, especially in missions when you're just supposed to walk to the office or uh, walk to someone. It's, um, I'm really having a ton of fun with that. And, like, running a lot on the on the roofs um, works quite well as well. Um, and the rope launcher helps with that. Yeah. Uh, Aries, anything else? Um, um, I, I guess um, playing with, with languages is always fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, because you really feel like you're in the place. So playing AC2 in Italian was, was really great for all yeah, sorts of Yeah, I did that with AC2 in Brotherhood. That. Uh, um, that is definitely something you should do. Obvious answers of like walking everywhere, yeah. Um, I, other things. I mean, I, I guess I just like to play like I'm playing the game if I were a demo man on an E3 stage. Yeah. So I try to, when I, I really takes a lot of effort, but trying to think about how to play this in the most entertaining way that makes it look the coolest instead of just like, oh, get it done. Uh, it really makes me feel like I'm a badass assassin much more. Yeah. yeah. And just like, in this game especially, like the little, just role playing a little bit with Jacob and Evie, like, Make Evie do the stealthy missions. Make Jacob do bring all of the rooks with yeah. him and do some of the more raucous missions. It's um really fun and uh, having separate skill trees kind of helps out with that too. Mm-hmm. Being able to make like two completely different sets for them um, is is really cool. I like it. I yeah. Really- um, one thing I like to do is like think about. Because in any game, you're mostly just, like, this amazing god in this world of basically idiots just because of the AI. Um, yeah. <laughs> but if you, like, take a step back from that and think about how this, you know, this random civilian that you just ran by in the street or, you know, um, watched you uh, kill a person, like, to think a little bit about what's going on in their lives, like... I don't know, you know, there's there's people here working in construction areas, you know, just really interesting to think about, hey, this character is probably based off of, like, a historical, um, you know, this little NPC that you're never going to talk to is based off of a um, historical account of how people lived um, and what they did uh, in their day-to-day lives. I think that's interesting just to think about for a second. Um, anything else before we move on? Um, sometimes, in very specific scenarios, uh, if there's some tense story mission that marks a change in a character, so, uh, like, someone has a reason to be really pissed off, I'll play very aggressively uh, for the next couple sequences um, to try to echo the character being in some sort of rage. Yeah, that's just kind of, like, very... part of the roleplay style. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely agree with that. Like sometimes, like what's happening in the story will affect how I play um, as that character. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. I'm just looking at the Reddit thread here. Um, uh, yeah, like Pop Smith uses Evie uses the rooks as distractions, and as Jacob um, use the rooks as your like uh, fighting buddies. Um, mm-hmm. It's yeah. It's amazing. Um, there are plenty of things you can do, and I um, really enjoy it. Moving on. Yes. Oh my god! I just killed a bunch of horses for a mission, and I got a trophy called "What Is Wrong with You." <laughs> that is funny. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> um. Right. Yeah. This has been episode thirty-three on the Island Podcast. A little bit shorter this week because we are all playing Syndicate and really want to get back to it, which you should probably be doing too. Um, about next week, uh, just to repeat what we said at the very beginning of the episode, if you want to be on our little roundtable discussion 
then you can contact us um, anywhere, uh, as usual, on uh, Twitter would probably be good, uh, Twitter DMs or tweet at me, or uh, Reddit would also be work very well, um, send, me an, uh, send me an inbox message, and then um, I'll add you on Skype. That's probably the only restrictor here is that you need a Skype account to be on the episode, um, but if you have that, then we're good to go. Uh, so yeah, uh, next week will not be spoilers, um, spoiler free. Uh, completely spoiler free, 100% spoiler free, and we'll get a ton of people in to talk about what they think. So basically, like that syndicate section we did just in this episode, but uh, broken up into with um, lots of different people, which I think should be a ton of fun. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be great because I wasn't on the last one, so I didn't get that, that mm-hmm. roundtable feel of having people jump in, jump out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely listen to the E3 episode for an idea of what this kind of system will be like. And then laugh at us of how wrong our speculation was. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> I'm still salty that there's no darkness and light stealth system like in Splinter Cell, even though I hate the word salty. I don't know why I just used it. I'm upset, damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, so next week is the spoiler-free uh, roundtable discussion. Then the week after that will be the spoiler cast full of spoilers. And the week after that, we'll get some guests on here. Um, so I'm Alex Marth. That's McCracken Way, aka Connor. That's Aries. Um, this has been the Amazon Podcast. Um, the music in the episode is by Shock Atlas. You can contact us on uh, Twitter, uh, on the subreddit, and, and our email, at gmail.com. There is actually an email sitting in our inbox that I haven't got around to yet. Um, sorry about that, guy, but we'll get there. Um, next week, we're joined by all of you, hopefully. If you want to be a guest or would like to ask us some questions, then you can contact us in any of those ways. Um, the timestamps are in the description. Um, I think that's it. Anything else you guys want to mention before we say goodbye? Nah. No, let's go. All right, let's get back to Syndicate, and we will Ooh. see you all next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.